Like the hundred other distorted decisions against Israel made by the UN in recent years, the despicable decision made today will not compel Israel. The Jewish people is not conquering its country, nor in its eternal capital, Jerusalem, and no decision made by the UN will distort this truth. In recent days, I spoke to several world leaders that changed their vote accordingly. Together with the Israeli President Isaac Herzog, Israeli Ambassador to the UN Gilad Erdan, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we've made an important accomplishment. After we stepped in, 11 countries changed their vote. As a result, we are able to overturn the decision. Those supporting the Palestinian initiative were in the minority, and those against were in the majority. Now for more on this, we are joined by political commentator and analyst Daniel Sheck and former ambassador. Let's get to the meat of this, Daniel. Ultimately, the UN has passed resolution after resolution after resolution against Israel. Does this have any more teeth than previous ones? Um, no, I mean, uh, uh, resolutions by the General Assembly don't have uh, any power. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you, you're using the term teeth, it's like a baby that is born without teeth, but it can be teething at some, at some point. And uh, although uh, this will have no direct bearing on the situation on the ground and it cannot be imposed on Israel in any way, this is a big deal, I think, in the long run, because uh, uh, the International Court of Justice is asked to give a ruling about the status of the territories, which Israel always calls there under dispute, uh, others call them occupied, others call them liberated. Here you will have a legal, uh, internationally recognized and respected. The International Court of Justice is a respected body. Uh, you will have a, a legal basis for uh, this denomination. And that may have a serious ripple effect, certainly on Israel's diplomatic standing uh, internationally, but also on other things, you know. Uh, uh, big corporations might think, uh, well, you know, this is maybe not the best time to invest in Israel. Maybe down the line, in two or three years, there might be sanctions against Israel. So there might, there's a whole climate and atmosphere that this can create uh, that is very, very problematic for Israel. And are we getting ahead of ourselves when we're talking about a problematic atmosphere? Because the actual Hague investigation doesn't have a defined outcome, at least not yet. No. I mean, clearly, we don't know what the, what the result will be. But, you know, beyond the expected uh, uh, satisfaction that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has expressed about moving 11 countries from voting uh, in favor to voting against or abstaining, which is, you know, I, you know, I'm the former diplomat. I will certainly not uh, underestimate uh, this effort and this uh, and this achievement. But the bottom line doesn't change. Uh, the resolution was passed with a, a large uh, with a large uh, majority. The real decision now for Benjamin Netanyahu and for the foreign minister uh, is: do does Israel cooperate with this body, with the ICJ, or does it not? Uh, in the past, in most instances, Israel had decided to boycott and not to uh, collaborate. There's always a big debate and dispute about the pros and cons of such a decision. There were cases where Israel did uh, cooperate and got, you know, certain satisfaction out of it most notably the Goldstone, the famous uh, or infamous uh, Goldstone report. Okay, so it's a very interesting and sort of uncertain future ahead because we, we're seeing legitimacy of two bodies being thrown into question here. The ICJ and The Hague could be accusing Israel of illegitimacy and Israel in and of itself, if it doesn't cooperate, is accusing the ICJ of illegitimacy and we don't really know how that's going to end. That is Thank true. you for helping us break all this down, Daniel. And thanks for being in our studio.